question I see is like, what could be other use cases of Gatsby other than the blogs and e-commerce? Basically, um, you can you can do everything that you want to do with uh, React in Gatsby. You can do possibly everything. So it means that you can also create a single page application. You can also create an application that has some kind of dynamic data in nature. Now, based on the use case, you will go about using Gatsby differently. So for example, if you have an application, the first page, the front page, having mostly static data. But once you get into other link from the first page, somewhere inside, that has dynamic data. So you can still use Gatsby, serve your first page as a pre-compiled uh, Jamstack way, the way that we explain. The next page probably can use the usual Ax Axios call or the fetch call to interact with your backend server, fetch the data, and build that level of interactivity. So the use case could be varied. Of course, the uh, e-commerce marketing guide docs are the primary use cases because those goes towards the static site kind of stuff. But you can also build a, a kind of a hybrid, like you have some static, some portion dynamic, and you can still use Gatsby, just like any other React application. So should I know React before starting to learn Gatsby? I would say yes. Um, so. Um, uh, from the learning aspect, I think this is uh, my favorite quote is like, now uh, the things are that way, like, you know, um, if you are, if you're learning React, probably you can keep uh, Gatsby or Next.js in mind to learn React. Uh, you need React for either of this, uh, to master either of this. But if you keep Gatsby.js or React.js in mind to learn React, what you'll be doing, your motivation is always towards, hey, I have to build this application using Gatsby. And these are the portion of React I have to primarily know. You know that get started with Gatsby. Now you can actually go more breadth-wise to understand other concept of as and when it comes in. So you won't get stuck with that you know, cycle all the way that I have to learn React completely and then I'll start with the framework. Keep the framework in mind at the end goal and then run. Um, Will Docs be useful for documenting project which uses framework other than React, like Fast API, Django, and Python? So, uh, Docs is primary. Uh, the the heart of it is, is like MDX. So it means that wherever the project, wherever you want to use Docsy, you need to have MDX support. So it means that it has to be supported by MDX, um, and because that's what Docs picks up and then try to create documentation around that. If you don't have MDX support, Doxy can pick up from the markdown also. So for example, if you remember like in the ignore case, I have just ignored my code of conduct or I have ignored uh, my readme.md file. So it means if you have a markdown file and if you tell Doxy to kind of look into that markdown file and pull it up, it will also do it. But you will miss the power of MDX if your uh, project is not say uh, JSX aware or works with work with JS. But from markdown, you should be able to still solve it. Uh, I guess I have answered most of the questions. I have given a name, I have given a import of uh, hobby from hobby playground and then I have a hobby card uh, and then I have um, this guy. Okay, so... Okay, so this was the problem. Uh, the indentation was a problem, so I hope that it will start working now. Let's refresh this. All right, so I think it should it should come up in a way. So similarly, you should be able to um, kind of give another uh, documentation for another hobby where you can change the weight to something like eight, if, um, you know, give a give a particular look and feel of it, and try to see like you know how that is coming up. Uh, you can also like create the full-fledged uh, not application, but at least some use cases using this. For example, you want you may want all three uh, cards to be side by side, and you want to showcase that into your documentation. That also you can do. So just by running a complete React component within within your MDX file. So. <clears throat> uh, a React component like this, I'll just try to pull up a React component. Send. Say a React component like this. 
So what I'm doing over here, if you just have a look, this is this is a this is a component, of course, because this is a, it's a function, it's a function component. I have a array of hobbies. So this is the first hobby, which is like with weight nine, second hobby with weight five, the third one. I have three hobbies. Now what I'm doing in my component, uh, the JSX part, I'm just looping through these hobbies, whatever exactly you have seen in my app.js file, right? Similar to that. I'm just doing that and then I'm trying to use the hobby object and trying to create the hobbies one by one. So what I'll see in my documentation, now it has all the three hobbies side by side. So anybody wants to kind of take this code and try it out, they should be able to do that. Uh, it's refreshing as I refresh the uh, save the file. So once it, it refresh, probably we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. see the output hey, over here. Uh, Tapas, I think there are two more questions that maybe if you just refresh your page, you'll probably see on Q&A uh, from oh, Kavya and Ankita. Okay, I don't see those. So do you want me to refresh? Yeah. Just try refreshing your page or I will uh, basically, I think Kavya asks when to use Gatsby versus when not to use is the question. Okay. Okay. Uh, and yeah, after that, I'll give you the next question. Yeah, so when to use Gatsby uh, versus not to use Gatsby. I think your, uh, uh, I think it is related to the first question that I answered. It's like, see, if, if you are planning for, uh, if you have a, ever uh, having a need of uh, serving your customer a pre-built uh, file, pre-built markups. So for example, uh, there are some static data. It could be about your organization. It could be a blog. It could be an article. You know, that's where the data doesn't change. And you have an opportunity that server is not going to regenerate those uh, markups for you and send it. You know, that kind of um, environment where your, your customers lives in, I think Gatsby is a very good choice, you know, for you to get started. Now, once you get started with it, and then you have a demand of, dynamic data somewhere other 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 places of the uh, application you can always bring that with uh, you know all other libraries that you have but yeah starting point should be the static app uh, kind of uh, requirement okay what was the second question other question yeah thanks thanks Tavas, for taking that i think the last question we have is from ankita what according to you is the greatest advantage of doxy as compared to other documentation tools I think the greatest uh, thing that I found uh, with Doxy is like uh, building a kind of production ready documentation site uh, is pretty easy. I mean, uh, your developers basically creating this doc site almost in parallel with their coding. So it means you are not handing it off to anybody, no third party, nobody else who is taking care of this. So you are actually bringing it hand in hand. So in our example, if you see, like if I change this hobby.js file, my component, maybe some business. Need. So if I make this change, my application is going to change. And not only that, my documentation is going to change immediately. So I am not making any extra effort to change this thing, right? How I am consuming this in on my application, my documentation has to change accordingly, right? So it is, it is, it is not like I have to copy this code again and put it somewhere and then have to build the documentation. So as you are getting a documentation as you code, that is sort of one, one of the best thing that I have found. Uh, second thing is like it is its capability of uh, theming it, making it like you know looking like your organization's documentation. Um, it's it's pretty cool thing. And then if you are from the React world, nothing like it. I mean, uh, you have all the power of MDX uh, to kind of get it. So that's really really cool thing that I, I found. Okay, what are the other questions? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Tapas. I think I think we covered most of the questions that we have so far. Uh, we can kind of go and wrap up the remaining bits. Of the yeah, so I think uh, I have covered most of it. Let's see. Uh, okay, it's something that uh, messed up here. Uh, okay, so these things have come. So let me just pull probably my. Uh, it happens in demo most demos, I guess. Uh, so let me just pull the dog from here and try to see like what, what exactly I'm missing and then we can see it. Uh, mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's the dog. Uh, same, I got the playground, I got the hobby. And then few documentation of it. As you're seeing here, I have given some code. Uh, just to tell, okay, this is how the 
or the hobby structure should be uh, and this is how you should be using it in the hobby then my red hobby and then you know my yellow hobby you know uh, that sort of thing so let's go to our this this guy refresh but in the meantime hobby land app and then go to documentation and if i go to components and go to this hobby card so yeah i should be able to see my documentation this is a code snippet i'm saying that here is an example to pull it uh, this is how you should be using it this is my red card uh, because this is the object that i am passing over here to hobby and it is kind of rendering again you can probably copy it and things like that this is the same for the yellow one same for the green one and then the last example i'm showing right an array of hobbies so i have an array of hobbies and then i'm looping through and putting each of them over here that's where you will you are able to see that so if you want to use this as a code you know um somewhere and then tweak it based on your need in your application that is also pretty much there so this is this is pretty good uh, and you uh, able to see this already that i have hosted this application on version so you you should be able to host it um you know easily on say gatsby cloud or netlify or versal that kind of cdn um and the hosting services um and uh, the best part is like your documentation lives on the same domain that your application is and you can just kind of move forward by first between them which is which is just like really really neat thing to happen i would say it it is you know right now there is a thing also so a dark and light theme and then you can from here also you can move it to your application so back and forth is possible so uh that's something that uh, i want to cover today you know uh, throughout that uh, about just a very quick wrap up i know we are a little bit uh, out of time we covered about the dw documentation we spoke about why gatsby and what is the need of it um and how quickly we can kind of get started with it then we spoke about doxy like how it can make your life simpler in terms of documentation how can you get started with doxy quickly then we spoke about how to architect your application in such a way that you make it a component based model so you have different kind of component so that same component you can use it in your app also can use it in your documentation then we saw like the power of mdx getting the jsx and the md stuff together then we saw like documentation of few things where we can actually use the playground use the props to make the documentation much more useful accessible and elegant to our end users and to the developers as well so that concludes my presentation uh, today and all the code that i have used is there in the github which is there in the the link is already there in the in the, in, the, in the article right so yeah over to you sahars uh yeah thank you so much tapas for that really nice session i think uh, in one hour we did cover a lot of ground there um uh, uh tapas you want to go back to your motto of the screen <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah so i think uh, tapas firstly thank you so much for you know taking taking so much time on a weekend and being part of this i think is one of the first uh, this is the literally the second uh, event we are having right and i think this is the first time you're also doing a live coding session uh, yeah yeah so i think i think given that i think it was a great session we did cover a lot of ground uh, we literally uh, anybody who's coming from uh, who has no context uh, knows how to kind of get started with gatsby and uh, kind of build documentation for their projects or build static pages around uh, their uh, uh, around their application right so thank you so right. much i think this was a really great session first of a lot of sessions to come uh thank you so much for taking time thank you everyone for joining and for all the questions uh i'm just going to push the polls uh live uh, so then you can just confirm what the results are of the polls and if people have got it right not got it right uh you can go to poll done polls done and then you know you can see the questions and then see if uh, have people generally got it right or uh, have we been a little off the mark yeah polls are looking great Awesome. So, uh, so I'm guessing everybody uh, got a lot of it right, and 
at least at least a few people I, I can see a few new faces on this call so i think a few people definitely must have taken something off from the session uh we'll obviously be sharing uh, uh for the same we have a blog on our wheel so anybody who needs to kind of uh, go through this entire thing again uh, we, uh tapas has linked the blog please find the blog on our wheel uh it has all the information that we shared on this uh live coding session uh <laughs> thanks again tapas i think this is a lot of fun uh looking forward to doing a lot more events with you in the future same here thank you very much thank you everyone for joining have a good weekend